Hey, hey, welcome back, DFS family. This is the Sunday School NFL DFS podcast powered by Fantasy Six Pack. As you may remember, I am your host, Dave Eddy. You can find me on Twitter at Corporal Eddy. And I just want to start off by making one thing extremely clear, okay? If this podcast somehow isn't providing you with top-notch information to help you fulfill your DFS dreams, you can definitely bank on the fact that you are listening to the most handsome podcast around. Now, the main reason for this is my trustworthy and obviously handsome sidekick, Mr. Patrick Mikowski, whom you can find on Twitter at PattyMac33. Patrick, why don't you say hello to the people? How's everybody doing? Glad to be back, ready for some football. Yeah, man, it's been, uh, believe it or not, it doesn't feel like it, but it's been about nine months since the last time we did one of these, man. Absolutely crazy. Oh, time man. flying. I know, I didn't even realize it until I looked at the last time that uh, the date stamp on the last one of these we did, and I said, man, nine months, Pat, you probably had that baby that was brewing in your belly. Oh, no, she's still there. <laughs> she's still there? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, hey guys, before we get started, uh, please go ahead and do us a quick favor and hit the like button there. And then if you enjoy this podcast, do yourself a favor and hit the subscribe button. And of course, if you want to keep a leg up on all your buddies, hop on over to fantasysixpack.net and check out some more great content. All right, so a couple things real quick about the podcast in case you're a new listener or, you know, it's been nine months since the last damn one. Uh, You know, just keep in mind that you know, what we're discussing, for the most part, you know, barring, you know, um, you know, a side note that it's not. We're talking about DraftKings, so that is important about not just roster construction, but also as far as, like, price points and stuff. So, DraftKings specific, because that's what we do. We're also talking MME, so big difference between, you know, the, the multiple entry tournaments and just, you know, cash games. Um, so, that's another thing. Again, just to keep in mind exactly what we're talking about we're talking about the main slate as well so we're recording this on thursday night you're not going to hear us talk about the texans and the chiefs they're not on the main slate you're not going to hear us talk about monday night games we're talking just main slate just mme just DraftKings. so a little bit specific but it's still good information nonetheless all right patrick you ready to kind of get into things so that uh we're not taking up too much time here let's rock and roll all right buddy all right, so um, first thing we've got on here is our gospel for the week. So this is our core play. Patrick, why don't you go ahead and start us off? Yeah, I actually uh, I got a couple guys this week that I really, really like. Um, I'm going to roster them both heavily uh, this week. The first one, uh, Josh Jacobs running back, Las Vegas Raiders, 6800 uh, bucks. You know, Carolina's defense – Carolina is the only team in the NFL last season that gave up over five yards of carry, over 20 rushing touchdowns, and 2,000 rushing yards to opposing running backs. Running backs averaged almost 32 fantasy points a game against Carolina last season. For me, Jacobs, he's going to get a ton of touches. Uh, This is as close to a sure thing for me uh, in the running back position this week. Uh, I'm going to be running him out there a lot. The second guy that I have, although the price tag is a little bit high, Michael Thomas, wide receiver, New Orleans. Uh, this is an absolute dream matchup for the best receiver in the NFL. Tampa gave up a league high, almost 3,200 yards last year to opposing wide receivers. The third most touchdowns, 21, and a whopping 45.9 fantasy points a game to wide receivers. Not to mention... Thomas plays better at home and caught 19 balls for 296 yards and three scores against the Bucs last season. By the way, in case you didn't know, TB12 plays for the Buccaneers. I've got a feeling him and Breeze are going to be slinging it around. Even with the second highest dollar value this week, uh, Mike Thomas, I'm going to get me some. I think a lot of people may shy away from him just because of the price tag. Uh, those are my guys, Jacobs, Thomas. Who you got, Dave? I'll tell you what, man. Sounds a lot like last year. Uh, a lot of Thomas, a lot of Jacobs being discussed between us. A lot of good matchups, you know, for them. I mean, they're, Michael Thomas is basically matchup proof. Josh Jacobs is a terrific running back uh, on a team that needs him. So yeah, I, I like both plays this week. Uh, you know, I guess I don't know exactly year to year 
what Carolina's defense is going to look like. I don't, you know, losing Keekly. I think that, you know, if anything, they're more vulnerable. And as long as Josh Jacobs is healthy, that's an easy one. Michael Thomas, I, I don't think he's going to be very low owned. I think he's going to be pretty chalky in that matchup. Just to keep yourself um, in mind of one thing, if you're going to be playing Michael Thomas, do yourself a favor, get a little correlation in that lineup and throw Godwin in there as well. If one is going to go off, odds are it's going to be a high-scoring game. They're both going to go off. So just something to keep in mind there. For me, I'm looking at, again, a guy that, you know, is a little bit of a throwback to last year, at least for me, uh, Terry McLaurin, $5,600 coming up for this week against the Eagles. I know the Eagles have big play slay on their team now. Uh, They were pretty bad against the pass last year. But McLaurin isn't really fighting too much for you know, shares, you know, out of that wide receiver core. They're probably going to be behind. I don't like Haskins, but I think McLaurin's going to be in a good spot. I don't know if Slay's going to shadow him or not, but at $5,600, you know, I still really like him. Uh, As a rookie, he kind of came out of nowhere last year and was pretty surprisingly, you know, dominant. And, you know, it does suck that he's got a fuck eye throwing the ball. (laughs) <laughs> and usually not very accurately, but I mean, $5,600, I think it's tremendous value for him. Uh, whatever my Mac exposure for the week is going to be, I'm pretty sure McLaren or uh, McLaurin's going to be at that. Um, probably going to be week one's a little bit volatile. I think um, might be looking at about a 50% max exposure this week, but um, McLaurin's going to be right up there with everybody else for me. Um, now for our devil for the week, Pat. So this is a, a chalk player that you're fading. Yeah, I'm going back to uh, that New Orleans-Tampa matchup. Uh, uh, the, the devil is, for me this week is Alvin Kamara. Uh, $7,200. You know, as bad as Tampa's defense was last year, the lone bright spot was stopping opposing running back. The Bucks gave up the second fewest fantasy points a game to opposing running backs, um, just over 17 a clip. Um, and they were the only team in the NFL that did not allow a thousand total rushing yards. Uh, but we know that this game is going to be played through the air, right? Yeah. But Tampa was pretty solid there too. They only gave up about 30 yards a game to opposing running backs through the air and a touchdown. Uh, like I said, you look at this matchup, the way that the offenses are going to be competing, um, I think Kamara is going to be pretty heavy in there uh, for most lineups. So I'm going to fade him out, um, try to save a little bit of money uh, in that running back spot and try to sneak my way in on some of those bigger tournaments. Well, let's see. It looks like last year, week 11, uh, they played at Tampa. It looks like uh, week five they played as well. Had basically 17 points in week five, 22 points in week 11. So, you know what, just under 20 points is, is an average there. Um, if he's at third, if he's at 7,200, you're looking at expecting him to get, you know, almost 3x. So, I mean, not bad, but, you know, certainly not great. Um, and again, same thing we said, or same thing I said um, with Josh Jacobs is, you know, what kind of defense is, you know, Tampa Bay going to have this year compared to last I. I don't know. I do think that this game has a chance to be very high scoring, which could be good for Kamara because he can catch the ball in the backfield if the game's close. He also is a great runner. So I think Kamara is one of those guys where, you know, game script doesn't really affect him too much because he's going to get the ball either way. But I could definitely see fading, you know, Kamara this week. For me, I'm going against Lamar Jackson. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of reasons that I'll be mostly fading him this week. Uh, number one, I mean, every week he, he did his thing last year, just week after week after week. And yeah, I, he re- yeah he, I mean, no, I, I'm not doubting the talent. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I do want to see week one, what happens when a team has a full off season to game plan against them. I mean, it's really no big secret, I think, that a lot of us have had a lot of extra time, um, you know, the past few months. And I would have to imagine that if I'm, you know, someone in the Cleveland Browns organization, I probably would have spent a little bit of that time thinking how I'm not going to let Lamar Jackson murder me. So that that's one thing. I want to see how 
I just want to see him do it again. It, I mean, he did it week after week after week last year, but we're in a whole new season. Things can change. I need to see it again. <sighs> Probably just as important, he's $1,100 more expensive than any other QB this week. I yep. typically don't pay up for quarterbacks. If you remember me and, you know, um, my, my cheap quarterbacks, Will Greer, um, you know, so on and so forth. So David Blau, uh, David Blau. I mean, you know, I, I don't typically pay up for quarterbacks and it usually works out. Um, you know, it's, it's a spot where you can save a lot of money, but if Lamar Jackson does go off, he is going to put up an egregious amount of points. But I just think that there's so many other, quarterbacks you can play safely this week that I'm not paying up $1,100 for Lamar. I'm going to put him in, you know, if I, I do a lot, I do, I mostly do 20 max. So he's probably going to be at, you know, 10%, maybe 15%, probably more like 10, which gives me, you know, two shots with him. So it's not like I'm going to fade him because that would be a little ridiculous. You got to get some action in on arguably the best fantasy player in football. All right, next on the list are Archangel, uh, which is our pivot of the week. Uh, Patrick, why don't you go ahead? So, you know, I kind of feel like a pivot is like that, that number two guy on a team where that matchup for that wide receiver, he's got the best corner in the game, so the number two guy, you know, is going to get fed that. So, you know, when you think about the the Sunday and the church you know, it's the Dextera Domini, the right hand of the Lord. You know, the Archangel Michael was God's leader of his army, second in charge. So why not go with Goddard? It, it, it just fits for me today. Dallas Goddard, Philadelphia, 4100 bucks. He's drawn that Washington football team. The Skins, sorry. The football team gave up the fourth most fantasy points a game to opposing tight ends last season at almost 14 and a half. They gave up the third most tight touchdowns to tight ends. Philly's got a handful of wideouts that are going to be either out or a little bit limited. Ertz is going to draw a ton of attention as he usually does. He's at 5,800 this week. Uh, so I really think you can do yourself a favor, save yourself about 1700 bucks, um, and roll with Dallas Goddard. Um, and I think you're going to get some pretty similar production, just a little bit more out of earth, but, uh, for the price and saving that money, I, I think Goddard's the play. I tell you, man, I, I love and hate Goddard typically, but this week, especially, um, it's hard because he probably is going to be my highest owned tight end. But it's difficult because he is clearly the second best tight end on that team. Now, granted, they don't really have um, receivers to throw to. But, you know, Ertz is pretty pissed off because he wants paid and he's not getting paid. So I could see him either going out there and saying, you know, fuck you. This is why you should have paid me. Or saying, you know what? Fuck you. You don't want to pay me. Either way, it, you know, it, it could be feast or famine for, for Goddard. But, you know, like you said, $4,100 is a nice price tag when you start looking at tight ends. And he does, I mean, he would be, if, if it wasn't for Ertz, he would be a upper tier tight end if he was the guy on that team. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. So it's, it's, it's hard because he is a little bit risky. Um, but, I mean, at, at tight end, unless you're paying up to the tippy top and getting, you know, a Kittle or a Kelsey or something like that, there is going to be a little bit of, you know, volatility to it. So, I would say Goddard, especially his price tag, is, is, is a good value and, you know, someone that gives you a good opportunity. So, every week I love and hate Goddard. Uh, yeah, I just, you always have to play, but, you know, Earth ever goes down and Goddard becomes a really chalky but maybe necessary play. For me... I don't know if I'm a homer or not, but for me, it's Marvin Jones, um, $5,500 this week uh, for the Lions against the Bears. The Bears. It was really, honestly, a debate um, between Calvin Ridley and Marvin Jones for me. I went with Marvin Jones for a couple different reasons. Uh, first and foremost, I think Detroit is going to rely heavily on their passing game in week one. 
because their running game, first of all, is kind of in shambles right now. Everyone that they sign to run the ball is either a child abuser or injured. <laughs> um, Kenny Galladay also, uh, while being the clear number one receiver, is is banged up a little bit. So pretty sure he's going to play. Kind of actually, for, for Jones's sake, I hope he does. Um, if, if Galladay's off the field, I actually think that hurts Jones as far as DFS is concerned. Uh, they'll be able to focus on him. If Galladay's on the field, at least, worst case scenario, he can draw attention. But Marvin Jones has a game or two every year that he absolutely blows up. I mean, he is uber talented. He's got the talent to be a number one receiver in this league. He he just has never been. Um, but the combination of Galladay being injured, Stafford being back, is going to be um, a, a strong reason that Marvin Jones is going to be a guy that, that I play quite a bit. I think... Even if Galladay was healthy, the, the ceiling between Galladay and Jones is still relatively similar. Uh, Galladay is going to have a much higher floor than Jones. I mean, Jones can either go for, you know, 10 catches, 120 yards, and two touchdowns, or he could go for a catch for three yards. Uh, Galladay is yeah. usually a little more consistent, but especially in week one where things are volatile, I'm going to save a little bit of money. I'm actually thinking that Jones is a safer play this week, even if just because of Galladay's injury. Either way, Marvin Jones scores four touchdowns. I'm happy for fantasy. I'm happy in real life. Lions defense will probably still find a way to lose that game, but at least I'll have a little bit of you know coin in my pocket. Yeah, hopefully a Ugh. little bit of cheddar. Yeah, right. All right, so our heresy player of the week. Uh, this is a contrarian play. Uh, what do you got there, Patrick? A little Jimmy G? I do. I got Jimmy G. I just feel like... He's been totally forgotten about this week. I haven't heard anybody talking about him. Uh, you know, I don't know if that's part because we don't we don't know if Debo's going to be playing yet or or what's going on. But let's not forget how awful the Cardinals' defense was against the pass last year. They gave up a league high almost forty eight hundred yards through the air, thirty eight touchdowns, and over 25 points a game to opposing quarterbacks. Not to mention what I saw on an early line for Vegas is they have this pegged as the third highest scoring game um, in this main slate on Sunday. So I got Jimmy G, 5,800 bucks. I think that's a great, great price uh, in the quarterback world this weekend. Yeah, and when I saw your notes, um, first of all, you don't know how to spell Garoppolo. Um, That's fine. Second of all, I had to Google it because um, I misspelled it about four times myself before I finally said, wow, Jesus Christ. Um, did you fix it then or did you just leave it the way that it was? Um, in the show notes that are going to be on fantasy6pack.net, it is correct. In, okay. in our notes, it is definitely wrong because I it. it there's a O in the beginning. It's fucking weird. There's, it doesn't make okay. sense. But yeah, the way, I sounded it out. Yeah, you sounded it out just fine, but yeah, it's not right. And I, I tried four times unsuccessfully to correct it on my own. Okay, good. But, um, you know, you're right. He is a good play this week. I don't know what his ownership is going to be because he does have a really soft matchup, but he's also not really a quarterback you think of for DFS. And he, other than Kittle, doesn't really have anyone to throw to. And they're probably going to run the shit out of the ball. But, again, when I looked at it, he yeah, actually is a really nice value. So, um, so, yeah, I do like it. I'm literally going on the other side of the field. Right. And my contrarian play of the week is Kyler Murray. Now, Kyler Murray's a contrarian for much different reasons. It's more of a salary thing. Um, now, he's only $600 more than Garoppolo, which, you know, is, is pretty nice. Uh, but he's also facing a drastically different defense. He's facing arguably the best defense in the league from, from last year. Now, Kyler really started off pretty strong in his rookie season. And then the second half of the season, he kind of fell apart. Last eight games, he only scored more than 20 points three different times. Now, I don't know how, but two of those three came against the vaunted 49ers defense. Yeah, Uh, I thought he played well against them. Yeah, he did. And it doesn't make sense. Uh, You know, he struggled so badly. And then he played really well against San Francisco. Now, kid, I think has at least Hall of Fame level talent. I'm not saying he's a Hall of Famer, but he's got that level of talent. And he's got the legs that go along with that arm 
that can get you some, you know, quote unquote, you know, free points, some Lamar Jackson type, you know, you know, ground points. Now, he's also got a brand new toy in at least top five receiver, DeAndre Hopkins now to throw the ball to after the Cardinals literally like drove to Texas and stole him. Um, yeah. But but I mean, Murray's not going to go unknown by any means. Um, I, like I said, I think a $6,400 price tag, which is the sixth highest on the slate, along with his tough matchup that is also on the road, is going to keep him from being highly owned. But he's definitely someone you're going to want some exposure to. You pair him with Hopkins, and then you run that back with Kittle, and you're going to want to have those three in, you know, if you're doing 20, you're going to want to have those three, I would say, literally exactly those three in two to three lineups. It has the potential to, to be, I wouldn't say sneaky, but um, solid. And then last one, our Hail Mary Patrick. Uh, so this would be like our long shot of the week. And the long shot of the week can vary from week to week uh, with exactly how long of a shot that is. But um, what are you thinking for week one? So I'm, I'm seeing a couple of pretty good running back values here. I got two names, actually. Uh, the first one, uh, Boston Scott, uh, Philadelphia running back, 4800 bucks. Uh, you know, Miles Sanders could be a little bit limited. Uh, I think Philly's going to get out to a pretty decent lead against that Washington football team. By the way, how stupid is that name? Couldn't they come up with anything other than that? Uh, it's driving me nuts every time I got to see it. Stop, uh, hey, hey, this is a family podcast. Don't talk about your nuts. <laughs> <laughs> right. Children are listening, Patrick. Okay. Uh, well, they should be in bed. It's school time now. Um, yeah, but maybe they're listening to this on their ride to work. Oh, yeah. Okay. Kids are working now. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> this isn't China. So, right. Uh, Scott, I think he's going to get a pretty decent workload against a really bad Washington defense. Gave up the third most fantasy points a game to running backs at just over 30. Uh, second most rushing yards to running backs, just under 2,000. Um, and the fifth most receiving yards to backs, just over 800. Uh, I think he could go for a pretty nice day because I Sanders is going to play, but it's just I don't know how much. And Scott's going to get the, the trickle-down effect on there. Uh, the other guy I like is Tariq Cohen, Chicago, 4,900. Montgomery's out. Cohen's the RB1. They play the stinking Lions. That's all we got to go with on that. I like I like um, I like Boston Scott. I don't know that that's I, I wouldn't classify him as a long shot. I would classify him more as a pivot personally because I don't think he's like an unknown or anything crazy like that. If if Sanders is out, he's going to be fairly popular. Um, I honestly think Tariq Cohen's going to be borderline chalk, my friend. I, I don't I don't think that's a long shot. And I didn't know if Montgomery if Montgomery is out then he's going to be like uber fucking chalk, bro. I, just my opinion. Um, you know, no matter, I don't know how many carries he's going to get, but I imagine that's going to be a fairly close game. You know, it's a divisional game. Lions, I don't I don't know if they've blown anybody out in the last 40 years. Um, they get blown out, but they don't blow anybody out. So I don't I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I like Cohen. I'm going to have a lot of him. Um, my guy for a long shot, and it's a household name, and it's kind of hard to, to throw long shots out there in week one, you know, um, you know, as evidenced by, you know, your two guys as well. But for me, I'm going Le'Veon Bell. Now, he went to a shitty college, which I know is completely irrelevant to this. Um, but it is week one of the NFL season. And if that didn't make things difficult enough, you know, we didn't get to see any preseason games at all this year to get a look at anybody prior to games so for me definitely early in the season definitely for week one that means i am pretty much shying away from playing anybody that's a rookie because this is going to be their first taste of live action and i don't think i would touch a rookie anytime soon um but it also means we haven't seen Le'Veon bell who clearly you know kind of rode the struggle bus a lot last year now um, you know, you can make a, a case in week one for a lot of guys to be Hail Marys just because we don't know exactly what we're going to get. I wanted to talk about Bell because 
He does have a great track record of being a great play in DFS, but his time with the Jets has completely stripped that away. Um, I fell for Bell. Well, yeah, that rhymed. Um, a couple of times when he faced great matchups early in the season last year, and it never worked. It didn't even come close to working. It, 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 it looked good on paper, and it never close to worked out. Now, he was pretty unspectacular in 2019, um, but oddly enough, he was very consistent even in that terrible year. Uh, he only scored in single digits on two occasions. I, I, that shocks me when I was looking that up. Um, he was relatively consistent, just not at a very high level. He's only 5600 bucks this week. Uh, still provides you with a good bit of upside. Uh, I probably hear this all the time about almost every player, but they said he's in some of the best shape of his life, and, and he's ready to go out there and, and, and play. So, you know, I think it provides a good value. Um, it definitely provides you with risk because it seems like every time I've played Bell, he has shit the bed. So, if you need to save a little bit of money this week, I think you could do worse than Le'Veon Bell. I don't know if I'm going to have him in more than one, maybe two of my 20 lineups. Maybe not even. Um, but if you're looking to save a little bit of money, I think you could do worse than the shitty Spartan. <laughs> what I don't know. Yeah, we we, we had a we had a Ohio State Buckeye reference. We had a Michigan uh, State Spartan reference. I know. Uh, I know. I don't know what's going on. I mean, I think I need to take my meds. I don't know why I'm talking about Buckeyes and Spartans. And uh, well, we talked about Tom Brady. That's a Michigan man right there, Tom okay, Brady. There we go. Um, I maybe Tim Tia, uh, blah, 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 blah. maybe Tim Biakabatuka will make a comeback for Carolina. Uh, maybe go. McCaffrey will go down, and we'll get a little bit of Biakabatuka. That's just as fun to say. say. It is a fun one to say. Say it one. Say it one time for me. Biaka Batuka. That's awesome, bro. It's kind of like saying Chai Weenie. <laughs> a little Tate Four CA reference for for anyone who knows who that is. What about the uh, little Denard Robinson? Yeah. There we go. We just we just man manned it up a little bit. All right, man. So um, I want to give one little parting piece of advice this week. Um, and that piece of advice is play Michael Thomas and play Chris Godwin together in your lineups. Patrick, do you have any parting words of advice? Uh, it's week one. I mean, everything, <laughs> everything's up in the air at this point. Just try to have some fun with it. Uh, you know what's a lot of fun? A of, <laughs> what's fun? Winning, Winning is, fun, Winning is a lot of fun. <laughs> right. Winning is a blast. All right, Patrick. It was a long nine months. I, I've missed your beautiful face. Uh, I can't wait to rub beard oil into it. I can't wait either. It's going to uh, be awesome. It's going to be a fun time, my friend. All right, well, let's uh, get on out of here, and I'm going to play us a little bit of music, my friend. We'll see you all next week. All right, have a good one, guys.